about a year ago, I was enjoying my weekend by sleeping in. It all began when I felt a tingle in my body. It started from my feet, it went up to my knees, up to my stomach, and up to my, up to my arms until I felt it throughout my entire body. I felt my arms and my feet being pulled down as well as the blanket that was on top of me. I started, I started began, I began to feel scared and I couldn't get myself to wake up. As much as I tried, I just couldn't get myself to move. I then felt my eyes flickering really fast until I saw myself sleeping on my bed. And not only could I see myself, but I saw my dog that was at the feet of my bed and I could also see my entire room. A few minutes later when I woke up, I sat up and I saw my dog exactly where I had seen him when I was uh, standing over my body. That was the first out of three times I had ever experienced an out-of-body experience. An out-of-body experience, also known as an OBE, is a, sen is a sensation of being outside of one's body, typically floating and being able to observe oneself from a distance. However, when, when uh, combined with other sleep phenomena, this experience could be either deeply disturbing or profoundly moving. According to Dr. Brandon R. Peters, November 3rd, to the 2012 Huffington Post research study shows that over 50% of people will experience an, a horrific episode of OBE throughout their lifetime. So today we will talk about what are the history of OBEs and how they, they were first introduced into the world. Second, we will talk about what an OBE is and how they occur. And third, we will talk about some interesting myths about OBEs. OBEs have received a lot of publicity throughout recent years, but not many people know how or when this was first introduced into the world. So first, let's start off with some OBE history for dummies. OBEs are common sleep phenomena experienced by humans and have had some severe complications on people ever since ancient times. The term out-of-body experience was first introduced by George N. M. Tyrell in his book of apparitions, and he claimed that OBEs were a spiritual doorway. According to the February 28, 2013 Stanford Research Study on OBEs, they have been experienced ever since 1000 BCE. In fact, the first known description of an OBE was, was occurred from the Upanishad. This phenomenon is like the 2010 movie uh, Insidious, where the little boy falls asleep and he can travel anywhere he wants. But some researchers claim that a person can get stuck in, can get stuck in a dream in the astral plane. Even though there have been many reports on OBEs in ancient times, there has been many more studies in recent decades. According to the October 2013 Oxford Journal, OBEs were adopted by researchers Celia Green and Robert Monroe in the late 1900s and were abundant in folklore, mythology, and spiritual experiences. In a personal interview with Annalita Ruiz on May 7, 2014, who has had multiple OBEs, stated that around her fifth OBE experience, she was able to explore from deep inside of the ocean to beyond the planet. Science currently considers OBEs as a type of hallucination that can be caused by various psychological and neurological factors. The July 7, 2010 New York Times claims that scientists are now able to induce OBEs by only using virtual reality goggles, a camera, a stick, and, some, and using some sensory streams, including vision, touch, balance, and the sense of where, where one's body is positioned in space. A Swiss neurologic, neuroscience Olaf Blank observed, observed that when he was electric, when he electrically stimulated a part of our brain called the temporal parsh parietal junction, a patient with no prior history of OBEs had an OBE. Another study performed on a woman in, in the October 2012 New York Times, where she was acting in that same exact spot resulted in a sensation that she was floating and looking down at her own body. Now that we understand how OBEs were first introduced into the world, now we can talk about how they, how they occur. Fortunately, with a lot of, 
with a lot of research and studies, we can break down these we can break down these steps. Scientists have been able to differentiate the two steps in which OBEs occur. Rapid eye movement, also known as REM, is one of the first phenomena. In Dr. Piccolo's 2010 Going Into the Wild Research studies, studies show that OBEs occur in the REM stage because during an OBE, REM causes a person to observe oneself while they sleep. According to the 2010 Eye Movement Induced Out of Body Experience article, every dream is accompanied by REM, a and a person can teach themselves how to have an OBE by creating REM. In other words, with a lot of practice of REM, one person can achieve their own inducement of an OBE. The second sleep step inc includes unusual activation of our brain's spatial perception. The angular gyrus is an area of the surface close to the temporal lobe and is associated with the perception of sound, touch, memory, and speech. It is on the upper left small area in the brain in the temporal parietal occipital region that when electric brain currents misfire, the result can be sense a sense of floating and seeing oneself from outside of the body. There are many interesting myths that are untrue about OBEs. One of the myths is that you can die during an OBE. According to the March 18, 2013 Life Science article, astral body is a totally different substance than the physical body, and the astral plane has totally different laws than the physical dimension. A second myth about OBEs is that you can get possessed. Possession is only possible when you deliberately invite a harmful entity into your body and consciously allowing them to use your to use your body. That's a form of channeling. As we have discussed today, we first we first learned about the history and how this how OBEs were first introduced into the world. Second, we talked about what an OBE is and how they occur. And finally, we went over some interesting myths about OBEs. Personally, I would never try to induce my own OBE, but as, a, as we have discussed, not all OBEs are bad experiences. And there are definite limits of where you can go in a dream.